cook who'll try anything. Chinese say owl brain food. Who talks to owls? You try. <laughs> We came from Scotland, oh, well, I mean, my mother and father do. I, I was born there, but I don't remember it, really. Oh, I was born in the Ozarks. You know where that is? Oh, well, it's way back there. Oh, and there are beautiful mountains and valleys. And my mother says, if you close your eyes and just feel the damp air on a hot day and take a deep breath, it's like being in the blue smoke valleys of Scotland. And Mother says that over there, it's not unusual for people to believe in pixies and gremlins and to be friends with the likes of you. And here only children do. Oh, well, at least some of them believe in fairy tales and goblins and tales of ladies and knights and dragons and Prince Charming. Oh, I do. I'm not supposed to. Well, I, I guess I'm not a child anymore. I'm grown up enough to be married. And as soon as my father can make arrangements, I'm going to. I really don't expect a prince on a white charger. I just hope he learns to love me. For real. Sir, where's me tobacco? You've gone and hidden it on me again. You didn't need it. I didn't ask you, woman. Samuel McIntosh, you change your tone of voice and go to bed. Where's me tobacco, sir? Can't you see I'm troubled? Smoking like a sooty chimney isn't going to help. Well, it can't make it any worse. When it's intended, you'll find a proper husband for Heather. Just because one man refuses you doesn't mean another will. Olsen was the only bachelor I ever knew to talk to. He's a God-fearing man with means, a proper husband. You shouldn't have filled her full of fairy tales and all that other old world rubbish. She may never grow up. Taking care of a man and raising her own children will occupy her mind soon enough. I was no different when my father arranged for me. Oh, in Scotland, they accept the likes of her. How can I find someone here? Make inquiries. Inquiries? From who? Mr. Hale said he'd rather not get involved. Did you talk to that scout, Mr. Shannon? Oh, sure. He'd not make a proper husband. He travels too much. He'd know the unmarried men. How'd you make out with old Mr. Owl last night, Duke? Well, by the time I got there, he already had something else on his mind. Like what? Like another owl. <laughs> did, did you ever see for a fact someone who could talk to animals? Well, I never saw anyone yet who didn't talk to his horse or his dog one time or another. Why? Do you think it's normal for a young woman to go out in the woods and talk to wild animals? Well, you can think anything you want, so long as you can separate fact from fancy. Uh, Picking your pack. I'd like a minute with you, Mr. Shannon. What can I do for you, Mr. McIntosh? Try it, if you don't mind, sir. Hmm. I'd like to be asking you a personal question, if you don't mind, sir. Sure. Do you think will my daughter make a fitting and proper wife? Sure, I... I guess if a man's looking to get married and likes her type. She has a dowry, quite a tidy sum. Give a man a feeling of uh, 
solidity. Yes, sir. But I'm not quite ready to get married yet. Oh, you're right, laddie, you're right. I couldn't possibly consider you. Sorry, I had to disqualify you right off. Unless you'd be willing to give up scouting and traveling for a living. Uh, no, I, I couldn't do that. That's the only thing I know. Now, you take other single men. They make sensible livings. Name one. Well, uh, Hamish Brown, for instance. He's a mighty good hog raiser, besides having an honest to goodness green thumb. Okay, here you go. Mr. Hamish Brown? I won't, sir. Samuel McIntosh, if you can spare a minute. You can just save your breath. I'm not about to sell any of my livestock. That's not what I'm about. Well, then speak your piece. I ain't got time to shake hands. I got to get my chores so we can roll. You're a responsible man. I approve of that. Whether you do or not, I can't say that matters. Self-reliant and independent. Worthwhile traits. You talk like a banker. I'm a merchant, young man. A successful one. I can judge character and estimate value. Whatever you're fixing to sell me, I ain't buying. Tell me, uh, how come a lad like you hasn't taken a wife? He ain't had time. Can't see how that's any of your business. If you had a good wife, you'd have more time. Yeah, I thought of that. I can't leave my chores long enough to go courting. Where I come from, a responsible man doesn't have to waste his time chasing the lassie. Plain as day, you're Scotch. Scotch American, laddie, and proud of it. My folks come from Ireland. Some good people come from Ireland. Well, that's nice of you to say. Your folk got a wagon on this train? My fall died in a Yankee uniform. Irish Americans fought well. He died of a fever in Hoboken. Well, you're not the first good son to feel the burden of a, a widowed mother. Well, I never knew my mother. She ran off the mule skinner for I was old enough to care. If ever there was a man that needed a good wife, it's you, my boy. You think so? I know so. And I've got the right lassie for you. You do? say she's fair to look at. Right, me lad. Of sound mind and body, and fair enough to look at. It's all here in the contract. She cooks, sews, keeps a clean house, and reads the Bible. You sure she don't mind getting married this way? Well, it was good enough for my wife. I'd say it was good enough for me, daughter. What if she doesn't like me? I like you. Give her time. She will. You sure there's nothing wrong with her? I'm not a horse trader, boy. I'm the father of a lassie with pure Scotch blood. Now sign the contract. And the Scotch-Irish shall inherit the earth. When I get the dowry? The American way. After the wedding. I'm proud to have you in the clan, son. B-R-O-W-M. E. E. Mrs. Hamish Brown. Don't you go forgetting your spelling. It's Brown with the final E. <laughs> Won't forget it, Mom. And I shan't forget any of all you've taught me. You've got to keep an open mind. You've still got a few things to learn. Tell me, Mama. You've got no right to be disappointed. What do you mean, Mama? Was there something you haven't told me? Something I should know or do? I only meant... You shouldn't have count your chickens before they hatch. It's time enough when they hear that he signed the contract. Mama, I, I've been wanting to ask you... Don't you go imagining things. You just remember. 
No matter what. Every cloud has a silver lining. That's what I like about this wide oak gun. What's that? You can be freezing in the hot sun, eating dust till you can't breathe, sleep in the mud all in one day. Yeah, and then I just begun. Put your belly ache. The element that separates the men from the boys. Well, then just call me June. Hope I've not come at a bad time. No, no, not at all, Mr. Max. Your friend was to meet me here. He's not come and gone. My friend? Mr. Brown. You're a good judge of character uh, for an irresponsible lad. I, uh... Oh, don't worry, don't worry. You'll get your find of speed. Uh, first, we'll be asking you to notarize our agreement. Mr. McIntosh. After they're married. Not before. Mr. Brown agreed your fee comes out of the dowry. Oh, I'm sure he'll give it to you. He's your friend and a responsible man. You said so yourself? They're getting married? They're not very bright, are you, lad? Oh, uh, you have authority to perform a marriage. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I promised him, Miss Brown, I'd take care of this expense. What, um, what do you charge for your services? <clears throat> well... Oh, it needn't be fancy. Just make it legal and binding. When do they want to get married? Tomorrow night will be soon enough. Let's not waste any time. I can't leave my livestock alone this rain. Uh, you, you heard the lad. We got no time to tally. That's your signature? You know it is. What was your person, father? He was coming across the moor with his father to talk to mine. Oh, I thought my heart would burst. I watched from a window as long as I did. Did you think he was hats? No, you didn't go judging a book by its cover. A father knows better than a young girl's heart what's right for her. What will I do if he doesn't like me? How can he not like you? He doesn't know you. Father said he was gentle with animals. You're a grown woman now, Heather. Forget about animals. And you must not daydream anymore. No man will tolerate a wife pretending to talk to pixies and gremlins and the like. You mind my words now? You're grown up. And you know what that means. Mother, I'm afraid. You're a good girl. You should be. What's ailing you, Lulu? That thunder and lightning last night dry you up? You don't believe that hogwash about thunder curdling milk? You do, and it will. We don't want that not do. Hey, Duke? Hey, Duke? I want to talk to you for a minute. I, w I want to thank you for recommending me. It's all right. You don't owe me a thing. Oh, Bob, I do. See, I got a wife through you doing. Just like that. No more trouble than getting yourself a new mare. You get yourself a wife. Well, what you so mad about? You met this girl you're marrying yet? No. Paul said it ain't permitted. You're marrying and you don't even know what she looks like, let alone anything about her? You seen her? Something wrong with her? What's wrong with you? Nobody's perfect. What do you mean? She ain't good to look at? Is that all that matters to you? Well, I got a contract that she can cook and sew and read. You ever known a woman, Hamish? A good girl? I don't mean one that you go to a saloon and drink with when you're celebrating a hog butchering. I've been running a farm since they drafted my paw, and I ain't got no time for sparking church-going girls. You think just because you got a stallion and a mare and a bull and a cow, roosters and hens, you could use a wife to help you run a going farm? I thought you were my friend, Duke. You got to a call talk to me like you do. Handling a wife takes some doing. And you've had no training. I know all I got to know. I hear about them hen-pecked husbands. Now, under my roof, I'm going to wear the pants. You don't know anything. You know how to tell a woman what she wants to hear? A wife needs courting and, and proof that you love her. I made a contract. I want to keep my end of the bargain. 
And Mr. McIntosh warned her that she'll keep his. Yeah, but you're not getting hitched to him. McIntosh's ideas might have worked in the old country, but this is 1869 USA. Unless you're real lucky. You've got a lit piece of dynamite in your back pocket and your hands are tied. You know something about Heather McIntosh, you ain't telling me. Did you ever hold a baby fawn and feel it tremble fit to die? Don't you scare her anymore, and she's got to be all ready, Hamish. All I know about Heather is that she's as delicate as a pressed flower. And she believes storybook living is for real. And you know what? From what I've seen, she could be right. I don't know what you're talking about. I figured you wouldn't. See ya. A, a Duke? Duke? Do me a favor, will you? What? Stand up alongside me when I marry tonight. See, I, I ain't got no one. And Mr. Hale said I'd, I need someone on my side. You sure do. You're a farmer if I ever saw one, Hamish. Thanks, Duke. I, I ain't used to this marrying business. What man is? Don't you fret now, nothing's changing. Come on, Lulu. I'm not gonna leave you for long. Charlie Woos is gonna be right here at your side. Did you get that wedding gown? Oh, you should be remembering it. It's your mother's. Then mine at our wedding. Now are we lassies? No man is expected to remember anything about his own wedding. Stop wasting your tears. She's no wee lassie anymore. Funny or something? Breathe. not proceed before we settle one matter. What's that? The fee you expect for marrying. You see us turn up in fine clothes, you might have got ideas. No, oh, don't worry about that. The Macintosh asks no favors, but will not be cheated. You got an exclusive on Marion, and it's only human nature to take an advantage. Well, just what do you think would be a fair price? And remember, there are 200 empty miles on every side before you go looking for a bargain. I thought of that. One dollar is a day's work for any man. This won't take you better than a half hour. I'd be satisfied if I were you. Did you know I've got Scottish blood? That's your problem, to deal with in your own way. You can stand closer together. The man is ready to marry you. Harry? 
take this. First chance you get, buy a teething ring or something. You can't have very much scotch blood throwing your money around like water. Do you mind what I do with my money? You know, all Scotsmen aren't like you. Well, you're sure from a different clan. You act like a McIntyre. You got no objection, I'll pay the pipes during the ceremony. McIntyre's been doing that for hundreds of years. It takes a Scotsman to appreciate a Scotsman. <laughs> Passed out. And who is Lulu? Just what is she to him? His cow. You should have heard her moan, like her heart was breaking. I never heard anything like my whole life. Like she had lost her best friend. That's no excuse to run out in a contract. He can't do this to a Macintosh. Do something, Samuel. Go and get him back. Quiet, woman. This has become a matter of honor. What do you expect me to do? Go after him, bagpipe in hand? All right, let's take it easy now. It could be worse. How would you like to have your daughter left for a cow? Well, Charlie said his cow was dying. You can't exactly blame the man. Hamish loves his animals. I ain't love my daughter, and he can't do this to me. I'm going to sue him, and I'm naming you in my legal action. What'd I do? You're his friend. That makes you a conspirator. You're legally guilty as he is, and I'm holding you for damages. All right, simmer down now. Hamish will be back just as soon as he tends to the ailing Lulu. I'm not about to have my lassie play second fiddle to a sick cow. Hey, stop running! You're a Macintosh! Walk with your chin up, you hear me, lassie? You see what that hog farmer has done to my daughter? Tell your friend, the next time he's unfortunate enough to come face on me, he better be prepared to defend himself. You, sir, owe me a silver dollar. Good night to you. Come, Sarah, and stop sniffling. You're wasting your breath. Why couldn't you come a minute later, Charlie? And have that cow die? You wouldn't want Lulu's blood on your hands. Oh, sure, Charlie. You can get married any day. But a good cow's worth safe. Well, Lulu's no ordinary cow. She's near human as a cow can be. She looked up to me with them sad eyes and went, Moo! Charlie, it bring tears to your eyes. And then she passed out cold. What brought it all on, Charlie? I don't know. He's talking about Hamish and Heather. Lulu's jealous. She's dying of a broken heart. Yeah. Or I don't know anything about women. Or cows. You can't die of a broken heart. You don't think so? You're going to die me, Lulu. I brought you into this world eight years ago this past spring, and you know what you mean to me. Now, don't you fret, now, because I'm going to be right here at your side. Lulu, what's wrong with your heart? That's not Lulu's heart. That's thunder. I got a mighty unhappy cow on my hands. Just how do you think that girl you were marrying feels? Don't you understand? I got to get Lulu on her feet. I don't think you understand. You left that girl at the altar. Why, well, that's a worse insult than, than stealing a man's horse or cussing in front of his mother. I didn't mean to front anybody. And I was taken by that girl. First chance I get, I'm going to do something about it. First chance you get. You made a contract. Tell you the truth, Duke. I was, I was so afraid I couldn't move. I was rooted right there until they told me about Lulu. Uh. Saying you would have run if you could have? Well, it, it's not that I don't like her, understand, Duke. It's just that I got a fright about being married right now. Duke, do me a favor, will you? No. How can you say no? You don't even want to want to ask. No, no matter what, I'm not going to talk to McIntosh for you. How'd you know I was going to say that? 
McIntosh said you better be ready to defend yourself next time you come face to face. I don't want no trouble. I like him. Well, you better get on your knees and get Heather to marry you if you know what's good for you. I can't do that. Why not? Uh, well, I, I can't leave Lulu in the condition she's in. What condition do you think Heather's in? Lately? That's what the Irish call it. <clears throat> What's he expected to defend himself with? His thick skull. Well, do you mind if I have a few words with your daughter? You will not be acceptable to me as a substitute. A traveling man is worse than a cow-loving farmer. Oh, you can be sure. Marion's not on my mind. Then what is? I just wanted to tell her that Hamish didn't realize what he was doing. For a grown man, that's no excuse. Heather loves animals, too. She would have done the same thing if... If you'd passed out cold during the wedding, would you expect Heather to stand there and go through with the ceremony? I am not a cow. Well, you're not a heartless man, either. What are you getting at? Hamish is an odd duck, but Heather isn't exactly an everyday variety of bird. You're just aching for a bruise if you don't hold your tongue. Well, if you'd give them a chance, maybe they'd want to get together on their own. On their own? Why? Love! A lassie and a laddie getting together for love without being man and wife. Oh, no, no, no. I have no part to these modern ideas. Forget it, then. Do you mind if I pay a condolence call on your daughter? She's not here. And if she was, you'd get to her over my dead body. Are you sure you're the father of that gentle girl? He wasn't like the night on a white charger I dreamed about when I was a wee lassie. I was just for a year. And he would have made a good husband if his cow ain't got sick. Now I shall never marry. What am I to do? Help Hamish get Lulu on her feet. Oh, you, you talk. You did just say something. No, please, Mr. Raccoon. Oh, don't go away. I need your help. Heather, aren't you ever going to grow up? It was you. And not the raccoon. You don't really believe animals can talk. What do you think a dog is doing when he barks? Or, or a cat meowing? Or why does a bird sing or a frog croak? All the animals and birds and insects and reptiles, they've all got voices. Sure, animals make all kinds of noises, but that doesn't mean they're talking. I know people that make all kinds of noises and they don't say a thing. Think what you want, Heather. But when folks find out you're talking to animals and they're answering back and understanding, they're going to start thinking you're a witch or something. And you know what they do to witches. Uh, after what happened to me tonight, I don't care if they burn me. Well, you, you're not going to tell them. Well, it depends. Well, if you do, you're... You're a snooping busybody, and I'd hate you forever. Do you ever get your bottom spanked? You wouldn't dare. No? When you act like a child, you should be treated like one. Well, it wasn't my fault. His cow got sick, and he ran out on me. It wasn't his fault you didn't understand and ran out on him. I ran out on him. Hamish ran to save the life of a friend. Why did you run? I ran because I thought I'd die of embarrassment. See what I mean? You're not fitting to be a man's wife yet. I am, too. Now, what else could I do? could have stayed and showed him that you'd make him a good wife. I could have. Hamish needs that cow. You might have been able to help him save her. What do I know about cows that he doesn't already know? Lulu's a female. Hamish or no other man knows as much about women as, a, as another female. You think so? Oh, I know it. Now, you take me. I know a lot more about women than Hamish does. And I'll tell you something and nobody else. I don't know nothing. She could die. Could? Oh, I saw her condition. Unless someone who can really just about talk to animals. Where are you going, Heather? I wonder what got into her.
chill there for a minute. I had a feeling some Apache had me earmarked for a scalp. What's the matter with me? This got me talking to myself. What's worse, I've been thinking you understand me. better what to do? Well, I might. I'm a female. I reckon you was. Oh, my mother was right. There are some things no man really understands. I've calved more cows and fold more horses and got bone more piglets and you got hair on your head. Well, then what's wrong with Lulu? Ain't a time yet. Oh, you know that for sure? She should carry for another two weeks. So you know that? Of course. Lulu ain't no different than any other cow. Oh, and I ain't no different than any other girl. I didn't say that. Well, you were willing to marry me without ever seeing me beforehand. Well, you agreeable to marry me, and you didn't know me for madam. Well, I didn't run for no reason. I had a reason. Oh, you think so? She collapsed. Well, you got scared. I can't afford to lose her. That's not what you're afraid of. She could die. You know what? It wasn't her time yet. You're just afraid of me. You'd hurt that I talk. Was not. I was afraid. It ain't no sin to be afraid. I was afraid, too. You were? Well, I didn't run. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that's all right. I understand. You do? This is the first time you tried to get married. You? First time I, I got so close. You've been disappointed before? Twice. They found out I still believe in. What? You think if a body talks to animals, she's a witch? Of course not. I'd, I'd rather talk to animals any time than people. Fa fact is, I like animals better than I do people. That is, uh, most people. Well, you think a body should be burned at the stake? That they talk to we little people that other people can't see. But I think you've got a right to see and talk and believe in whatever you want. I do? Yes, you do. Nobody's got the right to... Well, they just better not try. Oh, oh take it easy, Lulu. You're gonna be all right. Thunder and lightning's upsetting her. Why do you think so? Will you stay here, Lulu? Well, where are you going? Well, I'm gonna fix up some covers so we don't get wet.
know what I think, Lulu. gonna be all right? Oh, she, she isn't acting naturally, is she? She could be dying, for all I know. Maybe I could stay until the rain gets up a little. You could be saving poor Lulu's life. Do you think it's wrong for me to be alone with this hour? We're not alone. Well, besides, we're all almost there. Be careful, Bouton. About what? If a, a boy and girl are alone at night, you know what people will say. I don't care. Oh, oh you don't have to. You're a man. You got a right to sit up with a sick cow. Oh, well, I don't care. Well, I'm not going to get married ever. Don't care what people say. You don't want to get married ever? You do. You believe in love? It's all right, I guess. Well, you, you think of... Well, a girl, if, if, if she wants to be courted, there's something wrong with her. Especially. Do you think it means she's bad? Well, uh, that depends on what kind of detention she's courting. You ever kiss a girl? Uh, not a girl like you. I've been kissed. You have? Well, just as good as. You've been kissed, weren't you? You know what the story is, Stephen Good? No, never heard that one. It's a fairy tale. What's it got to do, Pink Kiss? She'd never wake up unless Prince Charming kissed her. Who cares? I pretend that I'm the sleeping beauty all the time. Is that how you've been kissed? You think pretending is good as being real? I don't know. Black kind of the weather. What do you want? You got to finish the wedding right away. Quarter to five. What's the matter with you? Nothing, but Lulu's having a terrible time. And we, we can't leave her alone. Ooh. Yeah, it's my cow. 
Heather's with her right now and waiting on you. We want to get married. Mm. Give me a wedding certificate right over there. I've done everything I gotta do for my little silver dollar. But Samuel McIntosh and a witness decided officially legal to ever couple of married. Where would that be? Well, what's your hope for a while? The sickness. Yeah. Unsells. I swear Amish Brown is in here. Hey. Now, Charlie's cooking. And dry weather is really something. In wet weather, a nightmare. What'd you say? Nothing. Go to sleep. this wedding certificate. Thank you, Father. Now, if you'll be telling me where the dowry is, I'll be bothering you no more. Under your mother's mattress. Now uh, you'll make me a happy man if you give me a grandson I can teach to blow the pipes. Mr. Criff! Mr. Criff! You better get back there. Mr. McIntyre is going to beat Hamish to a pole. Nice way to start the day. Where are they? Back here. Come on. Oh, I should have known better than to trust an Irishman. They're, they're no better than the English. It would never have happened if it wasn't for your black hat. What wouldn't have happened? He stole me daughter in her dowry. I did not. We're legally married. You heard him. He's out of his Irish head. What makes you think you're legally married? You said all I, all I needed was his signature and a witness. I said that? Where's my daughter? What you doing to her? You signed a contract and, and you gave Heather the dowry. And it's too late to change your mind. Do you have the certificate? It's all legal. That's your signature? I thought I was dreaming. Well, don't let that bother you. It happens sometimes to all of us. Oh, wait till you see it. You won't believe it. You're married now, Heather. No more fairy tales. Come see for yourself. That's 
why Lulu was so upset. That one is Prince Charming. Uh, that one's Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> this is going to be some story I have to write up in the wagon train log. Just call it a Lulu. 